Welcome back, everybody, to our first elimination best of five here in the LCS Summer 2020 playoffs. Game number one saw TSM taking a 1-0 lead over Dignitas, but one game is not enough to do it these days. You got to really put them all the way in the dirt. So we'll see if TSM can do that or if Dignitas is going to bounce back here because last game they kept things even for a good while. Mm -hmm. I think they had some good performances individually, right? You know, Dardoch was very far ahead on the Olaf, somewhat expected. Isaac, if you're talking, I can't hear you, so I am going to talk. Oh, well, uh, I'm not sure why you couldn't hear me, but... Um, okay, now Dardoch, we're good. Cool. Okay, <laughs> well, I think we're good now. Dardoch, uh, you know, had a pretty good individual performance on the Olaf, you know, created a, a two-level advantage, I think, performing uh, very well there in that first game. Johnson also individually, I just think, looked good throughout the whole game. I do think we might not see Dignitas go back towards the Senna unless they want to pair it with something like you know, maybe even a Cassio or a Corky or something along those lines that is going to have an easy, even easier time fronting front to back. Honestly, got to say, I'm pretty surprised to see the Renekton gone right back to that uh, in the first pick. It's already looking like a little bit of that solo <laughs> run back. Yeah. Uh, the first three picks are all the same. Dignitas, fair enough. Maybe they just feel, okay, Ooh. this is a difference already. Maybe Dignitas is just saying, Hey guys, if that top lane fight didn't go bad, we could have won the game, right? Because to be fair, that did put Broken Blade massively ahead of Viper. There was that insane skirmish up on that top side. You know, Viper flashed in and Spica got him with a great face breaker, clapped him together, stunned him. He couldn't get anything off. Broken Blade came out of that with not only two kills to, to zero, but he had a big farm advantage. He had an XP advantage. And it was very difficult, I think, for Viper to play back from that situation. Uh, this is a bit of a difference here, though. Going towards the Ezreal instead of the Ophelios, perhaps worried specifically a, a, about how things would work out with the Zoe instead. Um, is a little bit interesting, I have to say, because you are a relatively low damage composition. I guess if you think that Dignitas is going to go for, for kind of a lot of bruisers and not true frontline, then Ezreal is great because you can just kite it out and it's not like you're dealing with an Ornn or something that you really have to have you know maximum damage output to deal with. Uh, the Olaf is going to get banned out, so that's another change here, but fairly similar overall to, to what we saw in the first game so far. Right. The Olaf not being picked up before the second half of bans comes in means that Dignitas are going to have to figure out something else. Still stand by exactly what I said in game number one. If Dardoch ends up playing any champion that builds a Cinderhulk, I think it's GG before we ever hit the Rift. So I want to see him on something else that's able to carry last the game. game. Well, put something, that, that, can, that out there. something that can only build a Cinderhulk. <laughs> put it that way. Like champions okay. that have the choice is the important <laughs> part, Isaac. You have to be able to make a choice. Yeah, it's all so about like if he picks a graves, but then decides to build a cinder hole. No, that's empty. Come on, no, <laughs> <laughs> no. You're you're. Are you the guy responsible for that? Is it meta that that six wits in Diana video that Raya released or something? Well, if Diana just built six wits in, she's a bruiser. <laughs> okay, TSM they lock in the Nidalee here, which means that Spica will not huh. be on the set this time around, and instead that will either go to Treats or to Bjergsen. How are we feeling about this? Interesting. I mean, with the Ezreal, you know, since, since Nidalee is up, then you are creating a bit of a poke composition, right? You're, you're looking, okay, you have a little bit of poke. You have then th this front line that's going to engage. I think TSM needs to pair this alongside still a high, consistent DPS style of Pog. champion. K, though, let's Pog. go. Oh, all Start off right. locking it in. K don't, don't build no center hulk. Uh-uh. <laughs> all <laughs> day long. I don't think we've seen this since Spica actually had that, that infamous Kane game where it was like the 25 minute transform. He wasn't even trying to go for any ganks. You know, people were really negative about that. That was like the first game of the split for TSM. I think Speak has gotten massively better since then. But Dardoch bringing this out and the Leona. So <laughs> oh, yes. really getting aggressive here. They're saying, you want to sit back? You want to poke? You want to, you know, play scrappy? Um, then we're going we're gonna to go right at you. And, and it's not going to be, I was thinking that they could have done, you know, set support and actually gone for like a high DPS mid laner. Uh, it looks like it is just going to be set in the mid lane and go towards the Braum. So this does feel like an incredibly low damage composition for TSM. 
I've got to say I'm not a fan of it. It basically feels like Ezreal V9. I, I feel like in a lot of these team fights, yes, you are going to get supplementary damage from the Shen, you know, from the set, you know, from the Nidalee, uh, but they are not consistent sources of, of high damage output. You know, maybe we'll see them uh, augment their build somewhat to go a little bit more aggressive to try to help out Doublelift in that regard. But there are some champions with fairly high sustain on the other side. So if, if you're looking at like a Death Dance Renekton and a Death Dance Kane with, you know, with Red Form, who's healing a lot there, uh, if you have the healing coming through from Johnson, then I, I do think it becomes somewhat concerning um, for for these frontliners, right? Because th then all of a sudden the Shen damage and the, and the set damage is not that relevant. Uh, this does just feel like you must have a really good game as Double Lift or, or TSM's not really going to do much. So uh, we'll see how they can perform. And one thing I'm looking at here, because we don't get to see Kane very often, and I think there's a lot of subtle things with this champion that may not immediately come to mind if you don't see him a lot, play him a lot, or at least have him in your games very much, is remember that in professional play, pretty much everyone goes Rost all the time. Blue Kane is a little bit inty for professional play because nobody's ever really going to be alone, so he can just pop them instantly. And when everyone wants to go for Rost, it means you want red orbs. To get red orbs, you have to make plays against enemy melee champions. Now, with top lane being Shen, mid lane being set, and bottom lane having a Braum for support, that means all three enemy lanes will actually give Dardoch the kind of orbs that he wants. And for Kane, that is huge because you are not accidentally hamstringing yourself by ganking what would otherwise be a good lane, but you're getting the wrong kind of orb. I think that this lane setup is actually super fortunate for Dardoch. Yeah, I agree. Uh, you know, he, he's obviously not going to be able to necessarily farm it off of the Nidalee, but you know, he will have a lot of opportunities to go towards some of those lanes. You know, Renekton plus that cane could go up towards topside, try to pick on the Shen, even if you can't kill him, if you can just farm your form off of him, uh, that's going to be pretty effective. It is the Ghost Flash Phase Rush set. So this is the same idea as what we saw um, from Bergson last time around. Very defensive composition here from TSM. Again, it does feel like uh, you're kind of putting all eggs in the double lift basket. We'll see if they can prove me wrong and, and maybe if Bjergsen wants to go for a little bit more of a, a damage build here because they have so much front line with the triple tanks. But uh, I think it's going to be a, a really, really interesting game because this is just not a lot of champions that you see every day. You know, when you have the Kane versus Nidalee, it's not a matchup we've seen. You barely see the Kane whatsoever. Kane also with that Conqueror rune, that means that's your dead giveaway. If there was ever any doubt for anyone watching right now what he's going to evolve into, it's definitely red if he's going Conqueror because Blue Kane gets nothing out of Conqueror. It's not going to activate by the time that your burst goes off. It's pretty much your free ticket for anybody who's not used to playing against the champion or might be lower elo and just doesn't know. If he goes Dark Harvest, he's blue. If he goes Conqueror, he's red. If he doesn't abide by those rules, he's a noob. That's pretty much how Kane can be evaluated if you want a, uh, a bit of a spoiler in your own games as to which form he's going to aim for. But uh, taking stock of the teleports and everything, because last time they did matter a lot in terms of how things went early on and how Dignitas was able to get that early Rift Herald. On the side of Dig, it is a teleport for both AD carry and top lane, with Phoenix having the option to switch into one with the Spellbook. Aphromoon not having a Spellbook this game. We know how much Leona likes the Aftershock combat potential. On the other side, Bjergsen having double combat summoner spells there with Ghost and Flash, while Doublelift is manning the teleport here on the Ezreal Broken Blade, also having one of his own. Pretty much always going to try to run that teleport on Ezreal as long as you can. He is playing double yep. tempo here also. And we'll see how they do hold up in this lane. You do always have to be worried about the potential all-in from Leona. He is playing Ignite. Obviously, the Braum should be able to block a lot of any follow-up damage from the Senna, but there is a lot of CC there. If you can actually land you know, the Zenith Blade plus your Q stun, the follow-up root from Senna, uh, it becomes pretty threatening. Spika here, you know, a lot of his job is going to be tracking this Kane, keeping him down, because Kane is monstrously strong once you transform. Before that, you really don't have a lot going on, but Dardoch has snuck around here behind Bjergsen. Okay, Bjergsen with the Ghost trying to get himself away here. Dardoch does show up, although he won't be able to get a kill. That's plenty of orbs that he can okay, pick up Spika and work towards crap. that evolution. But Spika is hanging out. He's ready to go. Finds half of Dardoch's health bar pretty much immediately. And Dardoch wants to try to get away from this one. Second Spear is not going to find the mark. Bjergsen going in. He's drowsy. But the damage comes out. The Haymaker won't find the mark. Bjergsen looking to fight for his life. Phoenix needs a little bit more damage to finish this oh. one off. The auto attack will do it. And Phoenix makes it a two for one.
That is really good for Dignitas, to be honest with you. TSM tried to punish there, but it didn't look like they were on the same page. Speaker was actually backing up as Bjergsen was going forward, so it feels like there was a bit of miscommunication there. And when you're going to have those really low HP fights, you have got to be on top of things, on top of communication, really making sure you're on the same page there. Viper will have to back off. You know, he's losing out on that trade. And there's a lot more minions for Broken Blade to pick up here. So Broken Blade looking yeah. good. But let's watch this one more time. Is you know, Bjergsen was already very low here. Speaker lays a trap. He is playing Conqueror in Italy. So he has the Conqueror fully stacked here now. As Phoenix came over and the flash went through, look at Speaker. He's running away. He's like, all right, it's over. But Bjergsen flashes in. If Spika's there a split second earlier, maybe it looks a little bit different. I still think the result is probably very similar, but you can see Bjergsen almost had enough <laughs> health regen to actually survive there. That was that W passive, little sparkles there popping out and taking down Bjergsen, which means double buff donated over to Phoenix. That was so close. I thought for sure, because you know how Set's health regeneration just goes bonkers when he's low HP. I thought for sure we were going to see some random super regen keep him That'll alive through that. But uh, not quite. Not quite. And with Dardock now farming up his own blue, getting back into the farm state here. Also, with Kane and Nidalee being in this game, we have two of the fastest farming junglers in League of Legends. These two are able to just constantly clear and cycle their camps so efficiently and effectively. I'm expecting them to stay very relevant to the game just off of farming alone. Mm -hmm. And we'll see how much Dardock wants to prioritize farming versus prioritizing just trying to, to get towards his, his form. Because that's one of the things you have to balance, right? You could be a cane and have a ton of farm, but if you don't have that form stacked up early, you're not going to be very useful. You know, So much of what dictates your success in the game is being able to get an early red form and just kind of get ahead of the pace of the game to the point where you become so difficult to actually burst down. You know, you start getting these situations where Red Form Kane, especially when he's on Cleaver or Death Dance, you know, these types of items, um, has so much CDR, and he's just rotating through spells, healing through everything. Viper losing out in this 1v1 here top side until he presses the Q button, and all of a sudden, everything is A-OK. -okay. Right back into the lane there, maintaining some presence and some pressure. But you can see already, you mentioned how there were a lot of minions left for Broken Blade to farm up before we went into that last replay. Well, hey man, there are so many minions farmed up by Broken Blade now with a very nice lead for himself there in that top side. Uh -huh. Teleporting back to make sure he doesn't miss anything else. Continuing to have good showing here on the Shen. Dignitas, however, still commanding that about seven, 800 gold lead as Johnson and Aphromoo maintain control of the bottom lane here. You can see Treats trying to jump forward there, just keep the minions under control enough for Doublelift to farm them underneath the turret. But things are going good early on here for Dignitas. They are. And, and I also want to kind of highlight the reason for that aggressive trade from Broken Blade. So Viper hadn't gotten sticks yet, and Broken Blade hadn't used his teleport. So when your opponent has already based and come back to lane, and you're going to base, we'll, we'll call that off as Phoenix is going to get jumped on. Spika with a lot of damage onto the Dignitas mid laner, taking him down to half HP. Now even lower, here comes the ulti as Dignitas will try to outplay this one, but they've already lost Phoenix. Now they're going to lose Johnson. Both Dignitas carries out of the picture. Bjergsen, whether he's on one of those traditional mid lane carries or whether you slap the man on a meatball, he's got <laughs> sauce and he makes the plays happen. TSM pick up two and now they'll grab a drink. Looking good already. Big win for them on that bottom side, but you know, they are having you know more emphasis again on other players besides Bjergsen. And, and people people complain about this not because Bjergsen is bad at tanks and not because he is bad at, at supports, but it's because he is is so good at those carries and because he is so reliable on those carries. You know, TSM members are and fans are, are so used to seeing Bjergsen take over games and, and pull them out of unwinnable situations. You know when he is playing those carries, and that's more difficult to do on a tank. Um, but to go back a little bit to that earlier point, this is something that a top laner really can learn from, is when your opponent has gone for an early base and you have yet to use your teleport, you can trade your health aggressively and then use your teleport to refill it, as Broken Blade did. But here is the play one more time, going in on Phoenix. They knew he didn't have flash because of that 2v2, so they go in aggressively. You know, we see that dunk from Pearson, clapping them all together. As the R comes back from Zoe, he goes down. Johnson flashes out, but the flashes are there to follow. And because he had been tagged by Treats, that Braum passive was always going to proc. The one advantage right now for Dignitas is they do have TP up on Shen on the top side. So, you know, Shen doesn't have 
uh, the TP or the Stand United. So they could try to make a play, but because Dragon's down, it's unlikely they're going to get anything from it unless they you know, do a, a swap and send their top laner's bot, their bot laner's up towards that Herald, and then maybe you could get a free Herald because you have TP on the Renekton and Shen can't answer. Shen still in a great spot here, although I really want to see if we ever get a big empowered shield breaker out of Viper at any point in this game. Probably not, just because both top laners are always going to yeah. have to like TP to the fight, so you can't break the guy's shield when you're not there. It's also but, so conditional, because, yeah. because you, you almost always start fights with your W on Renekton, right? It's, it's very hard. It's super cool if you can break like a 700 point shield with your W and just say, aha, yes, that interaction finally paid off. But it's very hard. It's very rare for that to actually end up paying dividends there. As Dardock tries to use the ulti to escape away from Bjergsen and Spika, but they are in hot pursuit. The spear goes through. Spika is on the hunt, baby. And Jots are very late on that ultimate there on the Senna. So not able to get that shielding down onto Dardoch. Dardoch is being held down this time around compared to last. You know, on that Olaf, he was two levels up on Spika. He was the one running the show. Spika has gotten these two early kills. He's looking good. We'll see if they can continue this forward. The other thing I wanted to note is that we talked about how it is so difficult for Senna to deal with tanks. Yes. Guess what? It's even more <laughs> yes. difficult this game. You're on Senna. You have a Shen, and you don't have the Orianna. Zoe is not a tank killer. Zoe is not going to be, you know, bursting down this Shen in fights. If I'm Broken Blade, I actually build zero magic resist this entire game. I stack health and armor, and if I'm really worried about poke, I get a Warmox. But just flat health and armor is going to be more than enough to actually deal with any sort of burst from the Zoe, and is going to make you nigh un unassailable from the Kane, the Renekton, and the Senna. They just won't have anyone to deal with you. I like unassailable, man. That's a $10 word. That's not a word that you're just going to find sitting at the bottom <laughs> shelf somewhere. That's some top shelf stuff. I like that. It's behind the glass. It's locked up. you got to call, yeah, over, yeah, yeah, exactly. call over the shop, man. You need the <laughs> shop attendant to help you with that one. And Dignitas is going to need some help dealing with that Shen if he takes your advice. As mid lane, you can see the Paddle Star fine and Bjergsen, but what is he even paddling? It took off 20% HP, and the set is just fine. Mercury Treads alone appearing to be enough to take care of this one as Dardox Jeez. doesn't even have a chance to respond. No ulti's going to come through. Stun comes down. TSM is making this look easy. The scrim Nidalee showed her face <laughs> finally. We're seeing why people are like, yeah, this champ's OP. Let's get in there every game. You're getting nothing, and Johnson now, no fun zone for him, no flash available, spear lands. You are dead, my friend. It was scrims all along. TSM the whole time? is just doing so, <laughs> always was, man, <laughs> always was. TSM <laughs> is doing so much work early on here. 11 minutes into this game, 2,000 gold leads, seven kills to two, and now they are about to just go to work smashing some plates. There's one, can they stick around long enough to get the second? Oh, I think they just might. And here comes Shelly to turn it from two into four. Oh, this is just disaster for Dignitas. Shelly gets the charge off. Doesn't even matter that she dies there at the end. They only need to finish off that last half a plate. And considering those bonus protections will wear off by the time TSM gets back into the lane, it should be easy. Here's how they got Dardoch. Very well done there. They knew Dardoch didn't have flash that time. And they know, you know, he, he really only has one path to exit. So Spika threw it exactly where he was going to have to go there. Nails him with the spear. Cleans up two kills. And then Johnson was trying to get out of there. Knew that they were going to be coming for him. But too little, too late. And then you were just so dead. No way you can escape from this one without the flash in the 1v3. Spika grabs three quick kills. Five and one on the Nidalee. Two items at 12 minutes is just oh. absurd. He even and has a rod of ages. Yeah. Rod of ages. The, the, the item that stacks to what is it, like 160, 170% gold efficiency once it's fully stacked. So 10 minutes from now, that gold lead is just going to be worth even more than it already appears. Spika moving into the Drake here for the second one. He's got treats nearby. Nobody from Dignitas wants anything to do with this, and wisely so. Just let that one slip through. Deal with it later. Right now, you got to not try to take these fights against this Nidalee that has just taken over the game. And I've been plenty critical of Spika. I think he has been a weakness of TSM in more games than he hasn't. But in this game, he is seriously flexing his muscles, and I'm all about it. And they're looking for the dive here. TP coming in. Three men top. 
They got to make this work. If they don't find this kill in a broken blade, it is a tragedy here for Dignitas. Drowsy goes through, Sleep comes down, Dardock moves out, and Dignitas get there, man. Well played there. Converging on the top side. Solo laners and jungler working together to get that third kill of the game. Very nicely done by Dignitas. They had to keep making these plays, but it does cost them quite a bit, right? That's Senna ultimate as well as three members. Bjergsen's going to get some plates in the mid lane. They lost their turret in the bottom lane, so it's not as though TSM was getting nothing back. Now some of the jungle being pillaged away here from Dardoch, who is already behind. And TSM is in full control at this point, and I think things are going to be really, really tough for them if Broken Blade does just commit to this kind of pure frontline style. You know, Speak is already doing very well. Uh, we can see that Doublelift also is going to be going towards some armor here. It will be uh, going for that Iceborne Gauntlet, which I think makes sense. Um, the only magic threat is Phoenix, as I talked about earlier, and for the same reasoning, getting some extra armor here is going to be incredibly effective. Well, we can go ahead and sound the real champion alarm because Dardoch has evolved into Rost. What's that so horn sound like? Wee -oh, wee -oh, wee -oh. Is that a horn? That's like more of an alarm. A horn's well. Like, dun, 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 dun. Well, no? it is broke because you don't <laughs> see a lot of canes, so it has very poor funding. <laughs> but anyway, he's a real champion now. He did manage to get all the orbs he needed in the top side, and now we've got a dive coming through from TSM. But with the TP arriving and Bjergsen missing the Haymaker, Dignitas may be able to turn this one around. That's going to be a lot of shutdown money if they're able to get it. Viper, you need a little bit more damage, buddy, but it's not coming through. Viper getting too hyphy, trying to make the plays. Ends up giving one over. That was very close to a donation, though, over towards Dignitas. As after the TP comes in, you could just back it up, but they stayed around, and Spika almost gives up the shutdown. Dignitas now getting some poke down here. TSM will be sent scurrying. They look for the attempted play. It does end up working out. They get that kill, but that is a high risk, relatively low reward play, I would say. After they get the stopwatch and the TP, I feel like that's just one where you just back it up. Yeah, Dignitas not quite where they need to be with the damage there. Viper, you could tell he knows how bad the first game went. He knows how little of an impact he had, and he wanted to change that up here and just be able to get that shutdown, be relevant on this Renekton, be that big team fight force that they need diving in and disrupting, but not finding it, giving another kill over to Spika. Dignitas will at least grab themselves their first turret of the game here in the top side. Still a 3,000 gold difference. Still two minutes until that Ocean Drake shows up. Back-to-back -back games here, Isaac, with an Ocean Soul. It's going to be that, and, and with multiple tanks in the front line, I talked about why it's more effective, because you cannot burst down tanks. They're almost always going to get you know, some large amount of regen from that Ocean Soul. TSM will be set up very well to utilize that. Uh, and, you know, I would like to talk a little bit more about Spica because, you know, you had talked about how you don't think he's had that many good games for TSM, but I do think he, he gets somewhat of a bad rap. I think he's better than people give him credit for. You know, even in their game against Golden Guardians, I think his least in performances in the first games were actually, you know, quite good. Uh, you know, I think he was, you know, creating a lead over Closer. You know, he had some good smites. Uh, there were things going for him that, you know, were very, very nice, but obviously things fell apart and they, they lost a game. And, and you can put some of that on him. Um, but I do just think he gets a bit of a bad rap, and, and sometimes people are, are quick to overlook when he is having a good game. Well, credit where credit is due, I am impressed this time around. Seven out of eight KP. Rift Herald summoned up here in the top side. Turret goes down, and we're up to almost a 4,000 gold lead here for TSM. Bjergsen continuing that push. You can see he's sort of going for the same idea that you were talking about for Broken Blade. Forget itemizing magic resistance at all. You're never going to get 100 to 0 by Zoe anyway, so who cares? And just stack so much health and armor that the rest of the enemy team poses no threat to you whatsoever. DMP already completed, and you can see the Bomby Cinder as he works towards that Sunfire Cape. Stand United coming in, Broken Blade, just making sure it doesn't turn into a counterplay or anything like that, but he did want to guarantee Bjergsen's escape. I think that's well played by Dignitas. They can't just one-shot Bjergsen. They can't burst him down. So when he overextends, they just tax his resources a little bit. They didn't hard commit to it because if they just dove fully on in and Dardoch pops his ult, then Broken Blade comes through and you could actually die. In this case, they get the Stand United out for very, very little effort. And they are going to be you know, needing to get any little win that they can. Dignitas, no. though, may want to try to contest this, and it will be tough. Absolutely, but... The other choice is then having to contest every Drake for the rest of the game. Otherwise, it's Ocean Soul on a comp with two massive Oh, good tanks. poke. 
Double lift below half HP. Viper coming in from behind. Double lift with the flash over the wall, keeping himself alive. Here comes that big piercing shadow as Viper is now the first one to die in the team fight. Double lift grabbing the kill onto him. Three man knockup coming out from Dignitas. Aphromu walking away as you've got Dardock in the middle of four, in the middle of five, keeping himself somehow alive. Here comes the knockup over the wall. Phoenix needs a little bit more damage to make this one happen. It's a triple kill for the Zoe. Oh my goodness gracious, a quadra kill. The paddle star will not find the mark. Double if goes for the damage, but Noble Sacrifice Aphromu will stand in front of the shots and die for his mid laner. It is a fight going the way of Dignitas, and y'all better sing the praises of Dardock with the multi-man knockups, keeping himself alive in the middle of four people. Dignitas play that fight right. They played it really well, but Doublelift able to fight his way out of that and, and keeping them in it. This is the Honda performance play here. Watch Phoenix over the wall, chunking out Doublelift, and immediately now Doublelift has to play his fight so defensive. Look at this. He has to flash out from that Leona ultimate, get away from the Renekton. I talked about the onus on Doublelift to be that guy who's doing most of the damage. And because he had to play it so defensively due to that paddle start from Phoenix, who almost, by the way, nailed him with one more, which would have just been the end of the fight, Doublelift didn't have as much damage as he would want. He didn't get a lot of the auto attacks down. I think he still played the fight very well, but you can see how Dignitas can win some of these fights. If they can push Doublelift out, if they can have the rest of their members in there scrapping, but it is back to the scene of the crime here once more. We'll see if Dignitas can pull up the Miracle again. But TSM have full control of this pit, and they have the level advantage here on the jungle. We ain't done yet, as the Drake is secured by TSM. Dignitas see no more reason to fight, and why uh -oh. so? Unfortunately, Dardock is way too close, and that means an easy pick there for TSM with the flash taunt of Broken Blade. Enemy jungler dead. Baron is now alive They're as of going. 25 seconds ago. TSM can make the call for this. And, and they have Nidalee to actually heal them through a lot of the damage. They're just going to straight up start this up. Dardock is dead. Broken Blade is setting himself up for a flank. So if Tignas come to contest this, Broken Blade will be behind them. Broken Blade could actually get the angle here, but they're sniffing this out. They're trying to keep eyes on him. Phoenix does check over the wall, and it'll be up to him to try to poke them off. Afro Mook could be vulnerable here. Yergsen going in, Afro the target at the start. There's your follow-up CC from the Shen. Broken Blade grabbing the kill there. Phoenix still trying to kite himself away. Yergsen on the front line. Haymaker keeps him nice and healthy. Nothing to it but to do it. TSM pick up two. They're heading right back into the top side of the river here to return to that objective. This is a clean game from TSM. They peel off the Baron. They force Dignitas to come to them. And now come back again there, telling him. Phoenix does have a lot of damage here. Doublelift and Bjergsen both chunk from that. Doublelift's in trouble. Dart off with a two-man knockup here yet again. Viper into the middle of five, but oh, he just can't do the damage he needs to do. However, they will manage to get TSM out of here. Baron's not on the table any longer, so Dignitas will trade away their top laner for stopping the Baron. I want to see how much damage Phoenix has been doing in this game because it feels like he is a man on a mission. He is refusing to allow Dignitas to just go quietly into the night to lose this game here. Phoenix has been incredible throughout these last couple fights. He is nailing so many critical paddle stars over onto Doublelift, but it's going to get even harder now because Doublelift does have that death dance, which is going to mean he can start to shrug off a lot of the poke. He's also getting the additional MR from there uh, to be able to negate the flat pen that Phoenix has purchased up. It's also additional armor on top of that Iceborne that he already has, so it's going to be so tough now to actually burst him down with the protection of truths. 5 0 oh, and 6. Man, that is a scary, scary Ezreal to have to try to deal with, especially considering you've got less than three minutes before Ocean Soul becomes a reality unless Dig stops it. The Zoe pretty much has to one shot him. I mean, I don't see any other world where he's ever going to die to the all AD rest of the team when he's got these items that you just got done talking about. It's such a scary proposition. Spica also with an hourglass completed so the Nidalee can jump in with Reckless Abandon. TSM taking down their fourth turret of the game here with that tier two in the top side. And they're not stopping. Dignitas is not in the right position. What is going on? Phoenix is walking over. He fires off a sleepy trouble bubble. It hits a minion. There's nothing that he can do alone against this. TSM just take the inhibitor for free because no one from Dignitas was there to stop them. Dignitas moving in now, trying to find some sort of a chance on the back end of things. 
Nice haymaker there from Bjergsen to make sure that he doesn't take any extra damage, risk getting too close to the grave. TSM walk away. They got in here for free. I think Ticking Toss just didn't expect TSM to hard commit to that. They were assuming that TSM would push that out and then go to mid lane and try to take the mid lane, you know, tier two. So they were saying, all right, let's push out mid and we'll preempt that. Instead, TSM makes a smart call there and just commits to the push when they realize that Dignitas isn't around. They grab themselves an inhibitor, and that's going to make it even more difficult to defend this next dragon because in one minute, when that potential Ocean Soul spawns for TSM, Dignitas is still going to have to deal with supers coming up in that top lane. And remember that super minions have plenty of armor. It's their magic resistance that's negative, and spells are very effective at clearing them away. You've only got Zoe for magic damage, and yeah. Zoe must be at the dragon fight. If Viper's the one left dealing with these super minions, as you can see the lane allocations are now, he doesn't just smack that entire wave and then immediately get to rotate over quickly. Like, it's going to take him a little bit of time to be able to beat these super minions down with a 0-3 Renekton. So... <laughs> I think you're locked over there. Yeah, it's it's not great. And because you're locked over there, you can't you can't contest for vision, right? Because they have to have the TP up for when the dragon is gonna spawn, which means TSM can walk in, try to clear out as many wards as possible. There is one ward over by the dragon pit that would be a an, one that Viper could actually use potentially to, to TP over to, but they don't have a lot of eyes on what TSM is doing right now. And if Viper can't find a good angle to TP, they're going to be in trouble because it's 10 seconds now until this does spawn. TSM have control of the bot lane. No one is even answering Broken Blade right now. He's actually on the tower. They have way more vision in the area. They have top lane pushing automatically because of the supers, and they just cleared out mid. Viper just backed. He's waiting in Fountain, ready to TP in with the home guard bonus. Word expired. Aphromoo decides to engage, but double it with the immediate shift over the wall is perfectly safe. Aphromoo at 200 HP means he might as well be removed from the fight. He's already used his ultimate as well, so he doesn't have any long-range options. Dardock is in the Drake pit here, wants to make this a 50-50 against Spika. He's one level down, so he has the worst smite. TSM, they don't want a 50-50 this. They want to try to remove Dardock immediately. Dignitas does not want to allow that. Dardock's keeping himself alive here with the ulti. Viper diving in the middle of five here yet again. Nice three-man ulti, nice three-man knockup coming out there from Dardock as the damage goes through, and it's the Kane onto the Drake. Dardock will deny the Ocean Soul from TSM. Oh, and now Phoenix might actually get a kill. Oh, Speak oh, oh, oh. So that was, low. That was so much damage. TSM are going to go to Baron, though. This is going to be the counterplay here. I honestly can't believe Dignitas managed to fight their way out of that, losing only one member and actually preventing the soul from going down. I think that was very well played by them. Dardock had an incredible usage of the ultimate to avoid so much damage coming through from TSM, but now there's no way for them to contest the Baron. So TSM right. do lose it because Dignitas had the force there. They know it's pretty much GG if you give over the, the permanent Ocean Soul buff to a multi-tank team that you already can barely deal with. So they had the force, but TSM will still come out massively on top in the trade. They have the side lane pressure with the Shen here. They now have the Baron buff again. They already have one inhibitor down, so the pressure is going to be immense. And Double Lift also adding even more defensive itemization in now has the QSS. So he has tons of armor, tons of MR. If he gets hit by a sleepy or, or a stun, he can still get out of those. It's just so tough to deal with Ezreal, and it's games like these that make people, you know, really like playing Ezreal because he has such strong defensive options for itemization that when it's a team that, you know, really has to play aggressively, he has non-stop shifts, he can build defensively and still be effective, and uh, this is the kind of game you can really take over. I think that entire sequence of events was textbook for why having a 3-0 Drake lead can just win you the game, because your opponents Get, okay, for stopping the soul, what is the benefit Dignitas got? They get a piddly little regeneration A couple bonus percent of regen. That, that does practically nothing in terms of actual effectiveness in a fight. They lose Baron, but they had to. It was the right call. They had to. Otherwise, they just give away an ocean soul, and then TSM's able to force Baron anyway because you can't ever kill them. Mm -hmm. And it feels so bad to be in a position like that but I think this is just the perfect chance to showcase exactly how much that early Drake control has meant for TSM yep. and how important it's going to be from this point forward in this game. Turret falls, tier two gone in the bottom lane. TSM looking to take it right to the Dignitas base. Tier three turret under pressure here. Remember that TSM don't have the greatest siege in the world. They do have some tanks. They can try to dive if they want, but 
they are kind of just trying to poke at you a little bit, trying to throw some Nidalee Spears and some Ezreal Qs in there, but thing is, it's not like if Zoe was keeping you away. No, but Dignos has the wave clear, right? So you just put Baron Buff in, in three three lanes, and they can't actually clear it out, so they just walk up to his hurt and kill it off. Well, there we go. Bjergsen punches it to death. Senna ulti comes through. Bjergsen's not going to be dead anytime soon. Ulti comes down after moving the front line. But will it even matter? He's taunted up. He's nearly taken down. Bjergsen also so close to death's door. Nobody's dead on either side, but Dignitas are on the retreat. TSM, they're taking down the inhibitor in the bottom lane. Top lane inhib is exposed. Mid lane inhib is exposed. The Dignitas base will be reduced to rubble here as Phoenix tries to go forward, fire off some more paddle stars. It's looking pretty bleak here, Azale. But look at Dardock. He's behind them, so they actually have to try to force this fight on triple inhib. They're going for the fight right now. However, Double is already grabbing the kill onto Aphromu, and it's over before it even begins. Phoenix tries to find some damage, but forced to use his real flash to get away there as he was just a bit too close to the TSM players. And now all three inhibs are gone. Dignitas is on permanent base duty, and TSM are going back to shop up and look to end this game. They are a hair's breadth away from winning this game at this point. Enormous gold lead. The front line pretty much can't be touched at this point for TSM. You can see so many luxury items coming through for them at this point, and you know, they have the ability to close it out with Soul. They can just actually just go stand and, and basically AFK by the Dragon, and Dignitas has to go to attempt to defend it. But if they do, there's six super spawning per wave, you know, two in each lane that are going to be crashing your base, and that can end the game by itself. They already have such bad wave clear that we talked about. Dardock is spotted out here, and he's going to get surrounded. Dardock might just be dead. Oh no, you lose your jungler right oh, now. He's out it's, of there, it looks it's like. It's gotta be GG. Nope, Bjergsen is a man on a mission. He Ooh, goes for the ulti, but he can't quite close the distance. Broken Blade with the flash of the taunt. Dardock's still in danger. Goes for the ulti, TSM falling back, trying to keep him within reach. Dardock now getting CC'd, but some nice knockups coming through. A lot of CC being responded with now onto the lines of TSM. Tree's gonna be taken very low. Bjergsen trying to run away. Devil of Go and Godlike Viper once again, not able to find any sort of an option. Aphromu also gonna fall on the back into the fight. And TSM kill three. They don't even need the soul to make it happen here. Speak is taking a lot of damage as they chase forward, but Johnson and Phoenix will not be able to stand against this TSM tide. Roll it into their base. There it is. Nexus turret's gone. TSM will take us to match point. Really strong game here from Speaker. You've got to give so much credit over to him. Dardock busting out the cane. Wanted to get going in the early game. Wanted to get that early transform. And you kind of need to play Kane from ahead, just the way that the champion functions. When you are up in gold, you become unkillable. You're just healing too much. You have too much CDR. You're so powerful. But when you are behind, he's so much less of a threat. And Spika kept him down, finding him in multiple instances here. You know, being able to use that powerful early game Nidalee to take him down a bunch of times and really snowball this game. And then once he got them going, Double Lift was in cruise control, deathless throughout this game, went godlike. Yeah. Massive front line here for TSM, and I think this is what they were trying to show, you know, with that set composition against Golden Guardians. It didn't work out for them there, but I'm sure that they are happy to be able to have brought this out and say, hey, this was the idea. This is why we pick Nidalee for Spika. This is why we pick the set for Bjergsen. That's my big takeaway from this game, is in game number one, it was Broken Blade and Bjergsen. Those were the standout players. Game number two, it was all about Spika and Double Lift. And when you can trust everybody on the team to step up when they need to step up to enable any kind of draft and play style that you want, it makes your team leagues better. And now TSM only has to win one more game to eliminate Dignitas from playoffs contention and world's contention and move on to the next step themselves. With that, we're heading to a break. Once we come back, we will have the State Farm Analyst Desk ready to go with the breakdown. Don't go anywhere. At Honda, racing is at the heart of everything we do.
Welcome back to the LCS Dome, sponsored by State Farm. After TSM has pushed the series score to 2 and 0. Oh. This one, again, contentious throughout, although maybe a little bit more dominant in favor of TSM once they were able to grapple control of the game. Let's start right back where we were in game one, team comps, because uh, Dignitas, what's going on? First Don't pick take the Renekton. Dig side, I'll take the TSM First side. First pick in Renekton, twice, to one of your players that has not looked like one of your best at all. I don't think there have been many games where Viper has been the win condition, yet they're first picking this champion for him, and it's not working out. It really hurts. It really hurts to see that because it is just a, a mismanagement of resources for what you're working with in your players. Yeah, I mean, the set, honestly, uh, works for TSM because they play it in jungle and mid, but Dignitas also flexes set as well, so... I'm fine taking a beefy boy if you want in the first pick, but at least take the set. I don't see TSM rushing to get the Renekton pick. They haven't shown priority on it, so where's the need for take it? I'm not even going to jump into the why are you indexing into Viper. I'm just going to say, like, why are you indexing into this pick when you're playing against TSM? It's just totally not needed. And all right, Mark, TSM, I'm, I'm happy to get to run this comp again that we lost. You know, they lost to uh, Golden Guardians in Game 3 on and show what it's supposed to do and how they can play it well for a couple of reasons. One, to be like, hey, shut up, everybody. Look, we can do this, and it's fine. Two, also to uh, put some fear in enemy teams moving forward in, into playoffs where people are saying, you know, oh, it's only Bjergsen, you know, just ban him out. And now you're saying, well, well actually, you know, Nidalee, if you leave it up, uh, Spika can have a great game on and actually carry. Uh, and he dominated the early game. Yeah, and I do like the kind of transition they've made on red side, where usually red side last pick is going to be, you know, your mid laner, your top laner. They're using it for treats, and I know they're not really counter picking for him, but they're at least giving him a lane where Aphromoo can't pick a range support, and he's just picking for the comp. Man, Dig is just so lucky they actually ended up winning this fight because Dardock pathing that way after that gank just shows that he has no idea that Nidalee could be there because the Nidalee started in the bot side with, I believe, a leash from the bottom. I'm not entirely sure, but. You should be very careful after ganking when the scuttles are around because you know that speak is going to be around. And from that, will he just continue the onslaught? And, yeah. and this was the beginning of the end for the mid 2v2 match. That was in some ways as good as it would get for Dignitas to start things off. But you can see here the beginnings of TSM's uh, surge back into the game. Yep. Bjergsen playing a uh, kind of setup. Phoenix is someone who can be prone to ganks in the mid lane, and they made sure to hard target him uh, early on this game. Didn't get deterred just because the first one didn't work out. And then they just kept playing around mid, and this is what uh, allows it to be such a strong comp. You have all this setup for the Nidalee uh, to then go into a chase down mode. And Spika from ahead, I mean, it was insane. He had, a, I think it was a 12-minute uh, Rod of Ages completed. Mm. And at 25 minutes, he had that you know fully stacked and had his Zonias finished. It was it was insane how far ahead Speak had gotten this game. Yeah, probably crushed. wouldn't stop popping off about how impressive that 12 minute row was. Yeah, 12 minute <laughs> row all day. I mean, the only thing I will say, like, I kind of sided with the Zale when he says like he sees a Nidalee. He's like, oh, I guess they lost the game because this is kind of what you need to be doing on Nidalee. You need to be able to get all these kind of like scrappy kills and get ahead. Because if you're just farming 0-0 zero, zero as Nidalee, you're eventually going to fall really far behind. So I do like that TSM was kind of matching Dignitas' aggression because that's what you need when you pick Nidalee. I'm going to take a look there. 6K uh, plus A at Oof. 15. Super involved in the early game. An 1,800 gold difference at 15 minutes. Uh, it, it does, to some degree, speak to the fragility of those kinds of compositions. And, and as you were as you're, uh, saying, probably how far ahead an Italy needs to get in order to find success on the pro stage. But to your point, Mark, they did get it done. And they did prove to a wider audience that you know the failure in Game 3 against Golden Guardians was not necessarily something that should be expected of TSM when they uh, play a comp like this. Let's move on to a couple more fights uh, because, again, it didn't end there. Uh, this one, perhaps the real game breaker around the Drake, uh, 18 oh minutes boy. in. What's going on with Dignitas? Because this was a winnable fight. Well, we, we watch Renekton here because he's the one that's going for the flank, but does not respect the fact that the enemy could just turn on him. So he's basically instantly CC, doesn't really get to use his spells. In fact, just dashes out and ends up just doing not a lot for the team as Bjergsen finds a way to get a really good ultimate off of that, but that actually wasn't the end of the story. Since Darda continued to get some really fat knockups combined with Zoe, they actually were able to turn this tide, the tide of these fights, and it almost looked like Darda could get out. It's fine, but then Aphromoo, I think it wasn't necessary for him to do what he does here, which is Phoenix Zanya, since you're thinking, could Ezreal snipe him out with the 
WQ. Maybe there was a Henna, Senna heel coming out, so he likes to give his life for his carry, so I see where he's coming from. It just it shows that what Darnock could have accomplished this game if they didn't fall so far behind to Italy, the fact that he had pretty great team fights for the rest of the game, honestly, able to weave in and out and, and use the cane super well. Uh, that was also the beginning of Double is starting to pop off. He was not a focus at all in the early game. It was all mid-jungle, you know, aside from maybe a couple collapses. But then in team fights, uh, it was oftentimes Double if actually acting as the cleanup. And it was a big game for him after receiving so much community criticism uh, to have, you know, this game where he is clearly a monster threat in team fights because that was the, the rub was it's a one it's a one carry team. We got Bjergsen and that's it. And now Double is showing, no, you have to worry about me still. Deathless game on Ezreal there. Uh, an absolute statement game uh, when you compare it to uh, the four he had played prior to this in the in the postseason. Uh, but again, I, I think now I want to call into question the strategies going into to game three here for Dignitas with side selection. They've, for the first time in this series, elected to go to red side. So they are switching it up, at least to say a little bit. So what would be the immediate expectations? We weren't happy with things like Renekton first pick. Well, now red side counter picks. Where are we looking who's the player that we want to give the ball you know with the final seconds on the court i don't know about giving the ball just take the ball away from renekton no more renekton <laughs> it's done move on put him on the bench they, hey they can't first pick it right now because they're on red side i think that's a great strategy adaptation i mean honestly weirdly enough i think they should give counter pick to aframu this game and try to kind of replicate some bot lane advantages because i know they're doing well they're farming even in the bot lane but if TSM's going to elect to this Ezreal Braum, like unpunishable, like non interactive lane, I think they do need that, you know, Soraka, Karma, Nami, Zyra, something like that to kind of get the ball rolling in the bot lane. That, that's kind of where I'm at with this is I'm, I'm just not sure where these drafts are, are coming from. I, I thought, you know, like the, the power up Dardock drafts are the ones that were the best, whether that's, you know, Phoenix taking a more supportive mid Afro on, on uh, en Enchanters and stuff. And I just don't understand. You know the the ash bands when Johnson has been. That's a great what I ash. was about to say. I was gonna say I just want to see Ash make it through well, and that, see Johnson yeah. play it once. That's the thing is normally you know after losing two games on one side, I'm almost always like universally just change it up. You know, go to red side. But like I don't even understand why the blue side decisions were being made, which makes it weird for me to go to red side and say this is you know what they should be doing because I I don't understand what they were going for necessarily in the first place. Final yeah, I mean, thoughts, probably. Even the bot lane changing up, I'm fine with. But I would like to see Phoenix get back on Set or Galio to buff up Dardock because I think he has been playing well this series. So give him more tools. Like have your mid support him more. Don't have the Zoe. Just fine pick. But just get him onto something that he can help Dardock and win those mid two v twos. All righty. Well, look, we want to see more games because we love League of Legends. So we'll see with TSM up 2-0. Can Dig fight back for their playoff lives here in game number three? Right after this short break, we'll see you there. I'm Randy Diaz, mayor of Seltzer, Pennsylvania. If you love Bud Light like me, you'll love Bud Light Seltzer. It's a hard seltzer from Bud Light. It comes in four flavors and tastes great. Bud Light Seltzer, it's unquestionably good. If you don't love Bud Light, you'll love Bud Light Seltzer. It's not Bud Light, it's hard seltzer. It comes in four flavors and tastes great. Bud Light Seltzer, it's unquestionably good. Questions? Call us now. 